Hey, Dr. Hammer here. Thanks for joining me. We as humans are hardwired to connect. When we don't connect, it hurts. When it hurts, we medicate. That's what I want to chat with you about today. What if there were a different way to medicate? What if the way we medicate is actually beneficial, productive, and gets us closer to what we call happiness, joy, and well-being? By definition, happiness is when I can live in a way my behaviors are congruent with what it is I want. And what I want is to connect with others. Let's just say it's a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a mom, a dad, a child, a coworker. It doesn't matter, no matter who you are, you really do want to connect with others. What can be done about the situation when you're not connecting, it's hurting, and then you need to do something about it. So here's the example. So this is us, or this is you. Thank you, I know I draw well. You want to connect with others. Your authentic self is this person right here. Your authentic self, or your authentic you. This is who you are, and this is the greatest person that you know. It's your noble self, your highest self. The person who keeps you on the straight and narrow. As a matter of fact, way down deep inside of you is this being, this entity, this energy that trusts you, that respects you, that loves you, that will give you great guidance if you give space for that inner self to give you that advice. But what happens is we end up isolating that inner self. We don't allow anything near that inner self. So we create this bubble around ourselves. And what do we put in that bubble? Well, here's one of the things we put in that bubble. We start making up stories about ourselves that aren't true. So for example, I'm no good. Or I'm not worth it. And when we tell these kinds of stories about ourselves, because we're thinking this story, then our body has to go, yeah, he's thinking he's not worth it again. And then the feelings go, okay, he's not worth it again, I'll feel that way. And we get into this circular mindset, and therefore we act in a manner that's in harmony with our beliefs. Where do the beliefs come from? On the experiences you had as a little boy or a little girl. All these experiences are tied up, hanging around the authentic self who sees the end already. The key is that we've got to get these stories readjusted. So, there's another way that we do it. This is the empath people, the people who are really tied into everybody's emotions. Those who seem to work in their lives under the term of compassion fatigue. They carry everyone's feelings in here. So there are others feelings and they identify themselves as others. So if they're no good or they're not worth it or they've got others, all of this is what we call shame-based. And this leads to this construct of perfectionism. And in perfectionism we live in a world that's insatiable. It's never good enough. What can be done to get to the point where we penetrate through this huge level of stories that aren't true down into our authentic self so we can heal from within? Because right now the world would have us believe that we need to heal from without. So what do we do? We medicate. We medicate not just in the foods we eat, but we medicate, for example, if we're a heroin addict, we medicate with heroin. Others will medicate with anger, behavior addictions. Others will medicate with controlling, uh, manipulating, detective work. The medication process is putting us into a world right now that is the lowest it's ever been according to the most research in trust. We just have such a low level of trust everywhere we go. I'd argue that we have low levels of self-trust, hence the reason we medicate. Right now we're having an explosion of addictions, opioid addictions everywhere. Well, I'm just curious, where does the trust level dropping and the opioid addiction level rising connect? Is there some sort of connection, correlation, or even causation? At the Hammer Center, here's what we believe real simple. 
We believe that chronic pain, chronic illness, or that pain associated with that inability to connect, and we start with ourselves, can be done without drugs or surgery. So the key is, instead of trying to connect with your neighbor, your wife, your husband, or your, your child right now, what if you simply connected with yourself? What if you could get to, down to your authentic self and let the healing come from this position on out? So here's what you can do today, moving on. Before you go to bed tonight, take a moment, take a deep breath in. Hold your breath for just a minute, you know, maybe four seconds or so, then let it out slowly and just picture your highest self and how you would behave in that moment. Just practice doing that. Am I, is my behavior right now getting me what I want? Don't go anything more than that. Just be aware of what you're doing. And I'll see you again in the next video.